Well, first of all, I appreciate all of you being here. Um, this is the most filled up I've seen this room in a long time, so we're very appreciative. Our, I know our players and staff are too. Um, they're very well deserving of the coverage. Um, what a what a historic day for Sanford football. You know, the first um, home playoff game in the history of the school. Um, like right before the game, I told the team uh, what would be even cooler if we had the first home win um, in the playoffs um, in the history of the school. And they came through in dramatic fashion. Really proud of our team, our coaches. Um, we battled through a lot of adversity. Um, we had a chance, um, you know, to really open the game up there um, late in the third quarter, early in the fourth quarter. But tip your cap to Southeast Louisiana. They wouldn't allow us to do that. Um, and then, you know, kind of been the theme all season. We get to overtime. Um, things may not look um, look like it's going our way. And defensively, we force a huge turnover. Um, and then our offensive line took over. And, um, and then, of course, Quincy continues his magical ride with um, two back-to-back um, -back walk off um, overtime touchdown runs and, um, and, the, and the Bulldogs win. So we're really excited um, and we're looking forward again to being able to play um, in the round of eight um, up the Fargo Dome this upcoming week. On the, on the, the fumble that you forced in overtime there, going back and looking at it, I couldn't tell at the time, but it looked like it was just a great hustle play. You know, the, the guy just, uh, your guy just didn't give up. I mean, is that has that sort of been a mark of the defense, and, and, and was it was, is it accurate? Was it just hustle and made a play? Well, yeah, we, you know, we had um, we had a guy making a um, getting ready to make a tackle low on their quarterback, and um, and Braden Devault Smith came and knocked the ball out from the um, the end zone and um, from from behind, and um, fortunately it hit the pylon, which made it an immediate um, touchback. Um, so um, you know, I, I tell you, we've um, maybe not played the greatest football you know, week in and week out. Um, but one, you know, we make mistakes, we miss tackles, we miss blocks, we, we do crazy stuff. But one thing I will tell you um, is each week our team plays extremely hard with great effort. And, um, and that was just a, a small sample um, of, of what we see on tape each and every week. Defensively, it, it, you know, you have Brady making that play, but it seems like defensively, you don't have one guy that's, that's you know you really have to rely on to make plays. It seems like you've had all year long. You've had different guys make plays, different guys make big plays. We have, um, you know, like I, I said early on, we've been playing really good defense all season. Now the past two weeks, we've given up, you know, more than than we're we're accustomed to. But um, you know, you get to this point, you you play explosive offenses, and um, and and we that's happened. But you know, we've played really good team defense and. Um, you know, we are more of a kind of, you know, uh, we play a little softer and, and then kind of buckle down in the red zone. Um, and when you do that, it allows more people to make plays. And, um, and again, I think your assessment is accurate that we just got a lot of guys hustling around. And it um, seems like each week there's a, um, somebody always comes up and makes a big play. Coach, in a game like this with so much on the line, how much trust does the coaching staff have to have in the backup leading the team, but then also um, when it comes down there in overtime, you know that you guys can get it done in the big stage. Uh, well, you you know, you, it's just an extension of the game. I mean, it, re it really is. I mean, you, you, you tend to call the plays that work throughout the course of the game for you. Um, you're talking about Quincy, he's practiced well all season long. Um, you know, so, um, you know, we, we felt like he could go in there and, and, and play really well. We just had never seen him do it just like you guys. Um, hadn't seen him do it on on underneath the lights, if you will. Um, but we, you know, our our calls were the same as they they would would have been if Mike was in there. He executed at a high level, um, and I think with Quincy, um, you know, the team believes in him. So um, when you have that belief, it, it it makes it a lot easier to make that transition. Coach North Dakota State, kind of like what Alabama was, with Georgia's becoming <clears throat> now in this level of football, just the dominant power. How much faith? you have in your team that you guys can go up there into a really hostile building and come back with a victory? Well, first of all, you know, when you think FCS football, North Dakota State, you know, comes to mind. And, um, you know, we're a find-a-way group. Um, we're excited about playing. Um, we're not going to back down from anybody. Um, and, you know, it's like I told the team the other day that, you know, the Sanford Bulldogs play really well on Friday nights in dome stadiums. <laughs> and um, so we're excited about the opportunity. Uh, we're going to be ready to play. In a game like this, when you're playing there in their building and they have so much playoff experience, do you spend a little extra time in the film room? Do you have more plays on the third and long? Do you have an extra two-point play? Like, 
Do you guys just take it week by week as it's any other game, or do you add more wrinkles when you're playing a team this good? Um, no, you you know, each week brings its own challenges. And, um, you know, we, we focus more on us. I mean, that's what we can control, how well we play fundamentally and schematically. Uh, but each week you have to give the team different tools that you feel like is going to help them be successful for that, that opponent that week. Um, you know, you, you get to, what, game 13, I mean, you're not going to change much. I mean, you know, you're going to do what, what you did to get here. Um, and then plus, you got to realize this, we're on a, a very short week this week. So, um, you know, you got to keep it simple and let the guys go play. And um, I expect us to play really, really well. As a team, what, what's the biggest challenge that, that North Dakota State, biggest challenges that they, they, they you know, lay off? Um, well, I think just their physicality. You know, they they they're going to be a. They like to run it right at you, and they're big. Um, they have a lot of uh, misdirection. Um, you know, a little bit. It's almost a little like playing an option team with with the different looks they give you. Um, and then defensively, um, again, very athletic, very big in the trenches. Um, but you know, it doesn't matter who you play when you when when in football. You got to win in the in the lines of scrimmage. You got better run the ball, and you got better stop the run. And um, they hang their hat on that, and they're very good at it. And, and we got to better match that intensity for sixty game minutes Friday night. Well, what are the challenges? I mean, you probably played in a dome a few times, but what are the challenges, just noise wise, that a dome offers compared to you know maybe just you know, an outdoor stadium? Is there is it a different feel when you play? Yeah, it's been a long time. It's been since 1995 since I've been to the Fargo Dome. I went there twice, um, and you know it's a it's a awesome venue, um, but it's not as big as like you know we're used to going to the Georgia Dome or, or Mercedes Benz Stadium. A little bit more compact, um, but yeah, the noise there, um, their fans. Um, it's a tremendous atmosphere. And, um, you know, that's something that we've discussed with our team, but it's not anything that we can replicate. Um, so, again, we got to do a great job of communicating um, and got to do a great job of focusing on playing the next play. You've talked all year about how this team is just kind of a calm team, just sort of, you know, they can get too high, they can get too low. When you come into a game playing a team like North Dakota State, which what they, which, what they meant to FCS football, is, is that the kind of team you want to go in with, one that's just not going to get overwhelmed by the moment, I guess? Yeah, I think so. And I think that's one reason we've been successful this year because we have been very businesslike um, week in and week out. And we've been taking it one week at a time. And, you know, again, I said earlier, week 13, we're going to do what we do, what we've done all season to get us at this point. And um, I really expect our guys to be excited. Um, you know, I think, um, you know, I think some teams play there and get intimidated by that atmosphere. Um, I really believe our team's going to go in there and, and relish that atmosphere. Um, and um, now, again, how we play, I don't have a crystal ball, but we're excited and our guys are looking forward to the opportunity. Say, Coach, what do you think wins like we saw in the past two outings, two overtime wins, does for a team when you think about making a run in the playoffs? Well, you know, anytime you can win close games when you face adversity late in the fourth quarter, overtime wins, as long as you know you're going to win them, it does nothing but help boost your confidence uh, moving forward. You know, we're a battle tested team. Um, you know, we played tough Southern Conference. Um, you know, we played a, a, a tough out of conference schedule this year. And, um, um, so again, I, you know, I, um, we're just pecking along, man. Try to get a little better this week than we were last week. With, with Mike on Saturday, with, you know, he played five plays. Was it, did something happen on that fifth play, or did he just kind of just realize that, hey, you know, I, I was just having trouble at that point? Um, well, he, you know, he got injured um, on his touchdown pass to Judd Cockett in um, in the first overtime versus Mercer, um, and then. Um, we've just been managing his injury for the past two weeks, and um, he practiced limited amount of time um, headed into the Southeast Louisiana game. Um, you know, we sat out there. I looked like a um, old bullpen baseball coach watching him warm up before the game when nobody was out there to see if he could go. Um, he said he felt good, and um, and we had already made the decision that if he felt good, he had earned the right to start, and um, and. You know, and then we just, Quincy was, I just told Quincy, I said, I, it could be three or four plays, but he's going to have to come out of the game. And sure enough, it was about that many, and Quincy went on there and did his thing. With a week, you know, now he has another week to heal. Is that going to help? Um, 
It may, it may. We'll we'll, we'll go manage him like we did last week, and um, um, and and then see how it goes, you know, and make a game time decision. One thing that Coach Sefo said after the game the other day that, that because they're so different style of court, but not that you do a whole lot of different things, but but you know, obviously they're a different style there. That it kind of threw them off a little bit to have him, uh, you know, when he came in, and they it took a while to adjust. Obviously, North Dakota State's kind of can adjust for, you know, practice for both. I mean, I mean, do you think that is a pressure on a, on, on a team, though, when, when you have two guys that are just a little bit different? Um, I, you know, I don't know. I mean, you're going to – I mean, if they turn on the film, we, we ran the same plays with both QBs all season. Um, but, you know, Quincy, one thing Quincy does is he brings a um, – you know, he's a – a little bit better runner than Mike. Not that Mike's a, a, a quality runner, but Quincy um, has a, a little extra gear there. So having the dual threat aspect that we showed in the game, or he, let me say, he showed in the game the other day, um, I would imagine, um, you know, that they would, you know, that would be some, you know, some different preparation that they may have to be getting ready for. How important in, in this game when you're playing a team like this is it and it's important every week, but that, that the running game is having success because you've done such, such a good job this year of, of being, you know, both sides, you know, both aspects of the offense. How important is the running game in this game, do you think? Well, it's, I mean, again, is you know, it's, it's we got to run the ball, got to stop the run. And again, I know, you know, and, and I know we talk about, hey, well, this game, this game, again, it, 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 it always comes down to, um, to win football games. You got to be able to run it when you want to, and you got to be able to stop the run. Um, and it's a little bit more this week just because of the type of team we're playing. They're really good at doing both of them. Coach, I'm just curious, um, talking about the team being so businesslike and the process that this team goes through has been this consistent since the, the preseason. Do you notice any extra kind of emotions heading into playoffs from the squad at all, or has it really just maintained the same? Well, I was – I was really concerned last week because I, I, I we were a little bit more relaxed than we've been at any other time during the year, and um, and we've only had one practice this week, you know, it coming in here. So, um, so I, I really don't know. I if I knew, um, I would tell you. But um, they, hey, these guys, they just they're like that all the time, and um, I, I still haven't gotten used to it. So I try to be as say as say as little as possible to the guys to, to get them out of their routine. Does it help you kind of calm down, especially with these, these close come down to the wider games? <laughs> um, well, you just yeah, – we have great confidence in our team. We really do. And, um, you know, and then offensively, you know, we have great confidence that we have guys who can make plays. And, um, you know, with, with Quincy and Mike, you know, so when you're, you're calling offensive plays, you just call them and you expect them to go out there and perform them to a high level. Um, so – um, you know, again, um, they'll be ready or we'll be ready, um, but um, but I don't play in the games that those guys do, and I, I think um, I think they'll probably have a little more juice this week than maybe they have the past couple weeks.